Welcome back to the Prolific Author Podcast. How is everyone doing today? I hope that you have had a wonderful week of writing and that you are ready to dive into some great topics this month. I kind of have to start out by going off on a little bit of a tangent. I had a conversation with one of my brothers about um, The House of the Dragon, which just aired on HBO, and we all really enjoyed it. We were Game of Thrones fans. And what I wanted to say, though, is that in terms of storytelling, they're doing a good job with it. This series is a prequel to Game of Thrones, and I often get up on my my soapbox about prequels because not everyone does them very well. (laughs) And I really ought to do a whole deep dive into how to do a prequel because... You know, there are very specific reasons that prequels work and prequels don't work, but this one, they're doing a really good job with the internal arcs. They're doing a really good job of having very, I don't want to say dynamic characters because we've only had one episode. They haven't had much of a chance to change, but they are not completely good or completely evil. You have them doing some questionable things and then some things that you really like them for. Um, So there's that. They also managed to be kind of feminist without being really super in your face about it. You know, it was the kind of feminism that isn't radical, but I I really enjoyed that aspect of it in the show. And more than anything else, it's because they're really doing a good job of tying the mythology to the original series, right? So this is a prequel to the original series. And already they're putting things in it that are very much leading into that original series, which makes it just a really awesome prequel. So anyway, I will probably at some point do a deep dive into uh, prequels and why they work and maybe even prologues and that sort of thing. But anyway, so I just had that story on the brain because it just aired. There's only been one episode. Actually, by the time this airs, there will probably be the second one out. But um, it just struck me that they are doing a really good job story-wise with that with that series. Okay. So anyway, there's my little uh, soapbox for the day. Um, in terms of a personal update, we just finished the Heart of Your Story boot camp. I wanted to say thank you for everyone who participated. It was really fun. It was really great. Um, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about my experience of it. I have taught this method that I'm going to be taking people through and teaching them to others one-on-one, okay? But I've never taught it to a big group before. So I could tell when I was teaching it that there were parts of it that were a little bit clunky or that people weren't entirely connecting with. And that is okay. Um, That is why I'm teaching it as a free boot camp to start with, because I need to learn how to teach it to a group rather than one on one. One on one, my, you know, anyone that I'm taking through it, I can talk to them about their specific story, their, their specific characters and their plans for the arcs. But when I'm teaching it to a group, I have to, you know, kind of teach them how to figure this out on their own because I'm not giving them one-on-one attention. So I thought it went well and I got a lot of really good feedback on it. Oh, and just so you know, actually, when this is going out, I believe this will go out on Tuesday. So It'll be the last day. So yeah, today, as you are listening to this, if you are listening to it the day it comes out, is the last day to join Storyteller Accelerator. Okay, so you got to get in there before 11.59 tonight, (laughs) Mountain Daylight Time, if you want to join. So it will still be open, but only for a few hours, depending on when you listen to this. Anyway, if you didn't get in this time, that is okay. Um, Because I am learning to teach this, I decided to give myself a challenge. And I'm going to basically do a challenge or a boot camp every month for the next three months, just until the end of the year. So I did this one, of course, the last week of August. I'm going to do one the last week of September, October, and November. We'll leave December for obvious reasons. And that is mostly just so that I can learn to teach the live element of the boot camp. Okay, so it really is for me. However, um, each time it will you know, add in something that wasn't there before so that even if you want to go through it again, there will be, I mean, it'll be largely the same in a lot of ways. It'll just be me kind of dialing it in and figuring out the best way to go about teaching it. But there will also be something new that wasn't taught before so that you can still get something new if you want to go through it again. So um, all that said, the next challenge that I'm going to do, and yes, I've decided to call it a challenge instead of a boot camp. I am calling it the Master Your Story Challenge. The idea being that I'm going to teach you how to get a really authoritative grip on your story and figure out how to master it in the outlining process. It's going to be September 26th through 30th. I don't have specific dates just yet. So if you want to register early for this, it's going to be very similar to before. It's going to be probably four days. I might add a fifth training if everyone wants to do Q&A, but otherwise it'll be four days, probably Monday through Thursday this time. And I'm going to try to give you some more tips and tricks on how to master your story, okay? So if you want to register early for that, you can do so at bit.ly forward slash storymaster1. That's the uh, number one. So storymaster, all one word, and then the number one. 
Okay, so that is pretty much uh, my personal update. Other than that, just sort of plugging along. So let's go ahead and dive into today's topic. How to write a book in 90 days and why you should. <laughs> now, there are plenty of people who disagree with me about writing a book in 90 days. And the main reason, as I've talked about many times, is that they think that if you rush the book, it's going to be low quality. But I've talked about over and over again how as long as you're hitting all the relevant story parts, you don't have to worry about it being low quality. That's not even a concern as long as you're getting all the right things in. And of course, you're getting the right editing on the backside and all of that. So let's assume for a minute that no matter how fast you write your book, you're going to have the same level of quality. And I'm assuming it's going to be excellent quality. So whether you write it in 90 days or 90 months, the quality is going to be the same. If that were the case, then why should you write the book faster rather than slower? Why 90 days? Well, the main reason is that, believe it or not, when you write your story faster, and again, we're not talking about quality, we're not talking about editing or anything like that, but when you, in your mind, put your story together faster in terms of characters and arcs and scenes, beginning and ending, all of that, you are actually a more focused writer when you do it in a short amount of time. The longer you go, the more changes you want to make, um, the more you're, you kind of wander into different areas than you originally intended. Um, and the more you lose that original feeling and that original thread that first inspired the story. So let's talk about some examples here. You could argue, and you would have to read book series that are very long and span a lot of time that it took the author to write them in order to understand this. But especially when you get long fantasy series like The Wheel of Time or um, Game of Thrones or anything like that that takes years and years and years to write, very often it changes over time and, and readers notice a major difference in earlier books versus later books. Now, whether that change is good or bad is completely subjective, but the point is that it changed. <laughs> okay, so there is an old, semi-old now, Tom Cruise movie called Valkyrie, which is about an attempted assassin assassination on Hitler. Um, it's a pretty good movie, but I remember reading a review for it, and they called, I don't know why I remember this in particular, but it just always stood out in my mind. The reviewer called it an uncluttered narrative, and I didn't really know what that meant until I went and saw the movie. But then I understood what it meant. It just, the story was about this attempt on Hitler's life and there was literally nothing else the story was about. There were no subplots. There were no, um, Tom Cruise's character has something else going on on the side. There was no before and after. I mean, it was just this laser focus on this one aspect of the story, okay? It was not about World War II. It was not about other players in World War II or around Hitler, nothing. That's why it was an uncluttered narrative. Now, as much as I liked the story and I liked the movie, um, I will admit that I am a writer of very cluttered narratives. <laughs> I like a lot of characters. I like a lot. Of, I like a lot of things going on. I think that's truer to life, and it also, in a lot of ways, demands more participation from your readers. Um, so they are more likely to be invested in the story. Um, but of course, that's not for everyone. Not everyone likes the way I write. Everybody writes differently. Everyone reads different things. But my point in telling you about this uh, movie called Valkyrie is that. You want your story to be very focused. It doesn't have to be completely uncluttered as in one aspect to the story and one only. You know, you can do subplots, you can do backstory. We all like doing stuff like that. But you still want it to be very focused on what you're trying to say about this story. And the point I'm trying to make is that over time, if you take a really long time to write your story, it becomes more and more unfocused with every passing week, okay? And there's nothing you can really do about that. That's just human nature. That's just the way our brains work. This is the same logic that goes into people saying, focus on one thing, get it done, then move on to the another, another one. Because otherwise, if you're trying to do too many things, you do them all in sort of a crappy manner, right? <laughs> like, um, multitasking. Okay. And we're not exactly talking about multitasking when you write a story, but the point is, if you really want to get something done, you need to get it done. Move from A to B, then move on to the next thing. And that's been proven that that is the most productive way we can go about accomplishing things. If it takes too long, we've got, you know, our brain is going to get shiny object syndrome. We're going to go on to other things. As writers, we're going to end up bringing other things into the story. And the reason for that is that we 
come up with a different story and we suddenly want to write that one, but we're not quite done writing the one that we're working on. So either that story doesn't get finished or else we end up going, oh, I'll just add this into my plot because this sounds cool. But that's not originally what you had planned. So now you have the story that's just very discontinuous and doesn't feel very cohesive. And that's the opposite of what we want. We want a very cohesive, laser-focused story that tells one story. Even if there are subplots and things, that's fine, but it still needs to be focused, right? Okay? So... This is something that is true of all things, all kinds of work, but especially of writing, okay? It's the same reason they tell us that sometimes it's better to move to a shorter work week, only work four days a week instead of five, because if you can get a lot of work done in four days and just be really focused and then have three days off and come back refreshed, people who do that are actually more productive than people who work five days a week. By the same token, they tell us to take breaks during the day, right? Um, you know, there's all kinds of different philosophies on this. Um, one of my favorite is to work 90 minute intervals and then take a 10 minute break and to do that all day long. And there's a couple of reasons for it. One, your brain does need a break to get refreshed and then you end up coming back and being more productive. But the other thing is that it's almost like, it's almost like writing sprints or something. You know, when we have 90 minutes, we kind of go, okay, what can I get done in 90 minutes? And then we end up being more productive for those 90 minutes and then we take a break, right? So studies show that this is the way to be the most productive. And I'm, all I'm saying is that this applies to your stories as well, to being productive, being creative, but making a cohesive story. The other example I wrote down is that um, most of you probably know by now that I'm a Walking Dead junkie. I follow the show pretty closely when it's on, and I analyze um, symbolism within the show because that show is just chock full of symbolism and foreshadow, and you can learn a lot about that sort of thing if you watch closely enough. But one thing that happened that was really, really interesting. And it's the kind of thing most of the fandom who just casually watches would not notice. But me and some of my uh, symbolism geek buddies, we definitely noticed this. For several years, they were foreshadowing two particular characters that were going to have a big arc together. They were going to take off together. And the way they showed this is they would, you know, again, it was several times over the years showed them um, getting on his motorcycle and taking off together. And then nothing much would come of it when they showed that, but we just understood that was a foreshadow of something to come. Then all of a sudden, it was like not too long after COVID hit, um, they came out with these bonus episodes. And the foreshadowing in these bonus episodes was completely different than they'd ever shown before. They showed these two characters get into an argument, and then they literally took separate paths. And in the show, it made sense because one of them was just kind of like, okay, I'm going home. I'm going this way. And the other one said, I'm not going home yet. I'm going to go do some other stuff. So he went the other way. And it was literally a fork in the road, but the camera showed them diverge very, very obviously, like, like a V path, and they went different ways. And that was odd because we'd never seen that before. A few months later, it came out that um, they had originally planned to do a spin-off series with these two characters, but then the actress backed out. And we're not entirely sure why. It was for personal reasons. Um, I think it had a lot to do with COVID, and I think it had a lot to do with the fact that they are apparently going to be filming this spin-off um, instead of in the States. They're going to go to Europe, and from what I understand, she takes care of her uh, ailing parents, and so it just was not... It was not going to work for her to do the spinoff. And um, the show was very respectful of that, but they had to change the story they had planned. So they very obviously showed them split <laughs> and take different paths, which was kind of fun, um, instead of go together. Now, what is my point in telling you all of this? Once again, this is a long running series. Okay, the series has been going for 11 years long running series. And this is the story they had originally planned to tell, the two of them going together, but over time things change, right? And it had nothing to do with the actual story itself. It had to do with the actress and some things that changed for her. And, you know, that's just part of showbiz and the studio just kind of has to roll with the punches and figure it out. And they had to change the story they were telling a little bit, or at least the format of it, just kind of restructure it. My point is the longer you take to write your story, it's going to happen to you too. Everything's going to keep changing because you're going to get new ideas. And because, um, you know, every day you wake up and you have new experiences and you read new things and you watch new TV shows and you talk to new people and you do new things at work and all of these things are going to come into your story. So if you don't stay focused and keep your story on track, it's going to start to meander. And that's, like I said, there's nothing you can do to change that. That's just simply the way it is. So to stay focused, you need to write your story as quickly as possible, but of course, while still preserving the high quality. Okay, so that is why you should write your story fairly quickly. <laughs> By fairly quickly, I mean 90 days. It's going to depend, of course, on the length of your story and how much time you have to devote. But, you know, this is kind of a, a semi-joke that I make a lot. If you only have half an hour a week to write, it's going to take you a long time to get your book written, right? We all know that. But think about that. If you're only writing half an hour a week, 
Think about how much your story is going to change. Think about how much you will have forgotten what you wrote at the beginning by the time you get to the end. I mean, it's just not an optimal way to write a story. It's going to feel very disjointed by the time you get to the end. And the whole vibe, the whole mood of it is going to change because if it takes you a year and a half to write it, you're going to be in a completely different place a year and a half later, right, by the time you get to writing the end. So it's just much better, much more optimal to get it written quickly so that it feels more cohesive. This is the story. You're going, you're trying to tell now. Next, you know, after that, or in a, a year from now, you're going to tell a completely different story, but you need to get this one done now. So that's why I always recommend 90 days. So the next question is how do we go about writing a story in 90 days, getting an entire book written beginning to end? Well, these are some very broad steps that I think you have to take. Number one, learn to write well. <laughs> I know, you're probably all throwing tomatoes at me. <laughs> like, oh, that's it, huh? Just learn to write well? Let me get right on that. Um, but all I mean is that you have to put in the time to, you know, figure out how to write. And, and we all know that. This isn't anything you guys don't already know. You have to put in the hours. You know, we might be talking about 10,000 hours. We might be talking about months of writing before it really clicks for you and, and becomes a habit. And in fact, um, in coming weeks, I'm going to talk about how to create a, a fiction writing habit a little bit more. But this is something that you will be doing, you know, figuring out as you go, of course. The more you write, the better you'll become at it. But the point is, you can't sit down to write your first book without any experience and expect yourself to be able to get it done in 90 days. Um, I think it is possible to do that if you put in the work and really, you know, grind at it. But the point is, once you've written a book or two, it'll be a lot easier for you to do this, okay? So it's something that's going to come with time. Once you have a few books under your belt, it doesn't seem like nearly as insurmountable an, an obstacle, you know. It's not Everest anymore. It's just a little molehill and you can do it. But the first time, it's going to feel a little bit harder than that. Um, the same is true of dictating. Now, one of the reasons I can write as fast as I do is because I dictate everything. But dictating is also a skill, okay? So once again, you can't expect to pick up a recorder and dictate 10,000 words the first time that you dictate, okay? It doesn't work that way. It is a skill that you'll have to learn over time. But if you take the time to learn it, it will really speed up your writing down the road. So again, it's just about learning the best process for you to get the words down and to get them down well. So that's uh, step number one. Step number two learn to outline. Now, this is the crux of what I teach, how to outline your novel so that you know what it is from beginning to end. And that makes it much, much easier to write your book in a short amount of time. Most writers don't realize that the reason it takes them so long to write is because they don't know what they're writing next. Um, of course, you have pantsers, that's true of. But even if you are an outliner, even if you, you know, make some notes or have a basic premise or just kind of somewhere in between, outline certain things, pants certain things, you know, everybody falls on the continuum somewhere. But even those people, it can take them a long time to write because they don't know exactly what they're writing, right? We talked about that laser focus. And if you don't have that, then a big chunk of your writing time is sitting around trying to decide what to write next, okay? Even if you have some idea where you're going with it, it can still take a long time. So I get people who say, I could never write that fast. I could never do 5,000 words in a day. Well, I understand, and I'm not saying that that's not true, but the reason for it is what you really need to, you know, break down and get down to because most of the time the reason you can't is because you're taking so much time trying to figure out what comes next, right? So if you type some stuff in your scene, let's even say you have, you, you know, what's happening in the scene. You, you, you have a pretty good idea of what you're going to be writing, what the events are going to be, what characters are in it. You sit down to write, you start typing, and then you stop and think, and then you type a little bit more. And then you stop and think, and then you type a little bit more, maybe, maybe even get a few paragraphs, or maybe you get on a roll, get a few pages, and then you stop and think. And so then you're going, okay, but I can't, you know, I've only got about an hour a day to write, and I can't get more than 500 words an hour. Okay, but if you already knew what you were going to write, could, you know, exactly what's going to happen from beginning to end, what the repercussions are, what the internal is, exactly what you need to pull across on the page, at that point, you can time yourself and sort of um, do a writing sprint, and you're probably going to improve your word count significantly, okay? Um, so my point is, the outline makes you faster, it makes you much more efficient, it makes you much more focused. I would challenge you to learn how to do your outline in about a week. If you can take a week to do your outline, and then, you know, 11 weeks, the rest of the 90 days, to write your book, you will write a novel in 90 days every single time, okay? You just have to figure out the math and the processes and the scheduling, and you can do it. Okay, so that leads really well into step three, uh, which is figure out your process for writing consistently. No matter what it is, even if you don't have as much time some days, more time one day than another, even if you only have a few hours a week, 
figure out what that is and schedule it. Okay. You need to block it out and decide that, that is your writing time. And that is when you're going to get your words done. Okay. So again, a lot of the reason it takes people so long to write is because they only write time-wise willy-nilly whenever they think about it and have a spare minute. But if you don't block it out and be consistent about it, even if you only have, you know, go back to the example I said before, if you have an hour a day and you can only get 500 words in, I think you can do better than that over time. But even if that's true, you know, you're just starting out only 500 words per day. If you're doing that five days a week, okay, that's 2,500 words a week and 5,000 words a month. And over time, you'll be able to figure out how long it's going to take you to write a book. So you've just got to start with the consistency. Number four is do the math, figure out the end date, which is what I just said. Okay. So what I always encourage people to do is, and, and this won't work as well on your first book perhaps, but once you've written a book or two and you kind of have an idea about what your own writing process is and how long it takes you and how long your books are going to be, you know, if you write 60,000 word novellas or more like 70 to 90,000 novels or maybe big door stoppers that are 200,000 words. Okay, whatever it is, figure out the number of days you have to write, how many words per day you do, and then figure out what your estimated end date will be. Now, of course, you know, you're going to have sick days when you didn't get to write or things come up and other days you'll write faster or more words than you thought. So it might not be exact, but at least if you have an estimated end date, um, you'll have some idea when you can count on having that novel done and you'll have a goal to work toward, right? With very practical steps. If I write this many words, this many days, I will have a finished product. You know, it's just about breaking it down into small chunks and then you have something you can work toward and look forward to. Okay, so just to recap, the reason that you want to write a book every 90 days <laughs> is because that is the way to stay focused. That is the way to tell a better story, not let it meander, you know, back and forth. And let's face it, you're also serving your readers because you're churning out books more consistently, giving them more great stuff to read, and you're serving yourself and your business because you're building your backlist more quickly. Okay, so this is a good thing all around. And what are the steps for learning to write a book in 90 days? Number one, you have to learn how to write well. Okay, you got to put the, the hours in, the practice in, you got to put the words in. Number two, you have to learn to outline your book in a week. This is what I teach inside Storyteller Accelerator. We will have a deeply very detailed outline of your book and you will be able to put this together in less than a week. Once you've done it a few times and, um, you know, same thing, it's going to be a little harder the first time, but the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And also understand that you, just because you have the outline down doesn't mean you can't de deviate from it. All of us at some point have a light bulb moment in the middle of writing, you know, just something we've pantsed and then we get this inspiration and we go, oh, I want to do that. Okay, your outline is not set in stone. All I would say is that if you suddenly want to take the story in a different direction or add something and you know it's going to be better in the long run because it lines up better with the internal and with what the ending is and all of that, just go back, take an hour or two and fix your outline. Okay. And then you can keep writing from where you are. And yeah, some of you might be going an hour or two to fix the outline. Jeez, you know, but guys... If you're a pantser, it's taking you months upon months to write your book. Taking a, a few hours or even a few days to kind of fix things and change things, not that bad. The point is you can streamline this and you can do it much, much faster than you think you can. Okay. Step three is to get down your process for writing consistently, which means you have to block out time. You have to kind of test and figure out what works best for you in terms of environment, how you're writing, you know, if you're typing or dictating um, and get an idea of how many words per hour you can write and try to increase that over time. And step four is do the math. Figure out based on how often you can write, how many words per session, when you think you're going to get that book done. Even if it's more than 90 days. I mean, most people don't write their first book in 90 days. That's very rare, their first fiction book. We hear these stories all the time. Even J.K. Rowling, it took her like five years to write the first Harry Potter, right? But over time, once you get you know a better feel for what your own process is, you can wheedle it down. You can get much better at it. And of course, there are different seasons in life. Maybe you can only write a few hours a week right now. But in another year or two, you'll have all this time to write. You can be full time. So why not figure this out now so that you can use it to your advantage then? Train your brain to do this now. And then when you have more opportunity, you'll be way ahead of the curve. Okay? So those are the processes. And I would challenge you as soon as you are done listening to this to sit down and figure this out for yourself. Okay? When can you write? How often can you write? And maybe even do a test if you sit back and just start typing do it in a really relaxed way, not like speed typing, but just type and see how many words you get per minute or five minutes. And then you can figure out how many words per hour you can do. Honestly, if you're really focused and don't have to stop and think about what comes next, you will be amazed how many words you can get down per hour. I promise it's more than you think. Okay. <laughs> 
So I hope you found some value in this episode. I hope it's given you something to think about. And if you are up for the Master Your Story Challenge coming at the end of September, make sure and go register at bit.ly forward slash storymaster1. All right? Everyone have a wonderful week of writing, and I will see you next week. Bye.